morning. Welcome to United Methodist Church. My name is Michelle Foster Beckerleg. I am one of the pastors, and we are delighted that you have chosen this opportunity to worship together. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or online, we are delighted you are here. I know it's a big day in the life of the church, and you know it's a big day in the life of the church, and we are delighted to welcome our new lead pastor, Reverend Christy Taylor and her family here today, and I hope that at the conclusion of this service, you will make opportunity to introduce yourself, and next week we will have name tags so that she can really begin to connect names and faces as well, and while For us, we're only having to get used to one person or two people's new names. Remind, just a reminder to all of us that she's trying to learn hundreds of names. And so please introduce yourself every time you speak to her um, so that she can have a clue who you are and try and make connections. It's always a wonderful act of hospitality. Also, her husband, Sean, is with us today, and so certainly I hope that he will join Christy at the end of the service, and um, you might be able to meet him as well. As we move into this new time of leadership, I want to invite you to make sure that the church office has your most up-to-date contact information. Christy is planning to utilize the newsletter and email to communicate quite a bit, and we want to make sure that you're a part of that communication. And so you will see if you will use the email office at woodmontumc.org, we will be able to check our records and make sure we have the most up-to-date contact information for you. Also, an invitation, if you are tired of these dog days of summer and want a little fun in the sun and a way to cool off, We hope that you will join us this Wednesday evening uh, for our family fun night. It's called Living Water. It starts at 6.30 and will go till 8 o'clock. And it is an opportunity for us to come together and either with children or as a child at heart to experience the joy of fun in water and to explore a little bit more what it means that Jesus Christ is living water. So please extend the invitation to your friends, to your family, and to your neighbors. Come ready to get wet, and don't forget the towel for the ride home as well. You will see there is a rain date. We do not anticipate any bad weather this Wednesday, but should there um, be bad weather, we do have a rain date planned. What a beautiful, beautiful day it is for us to come together and to worship the Lord. And so now, as we continue worshiping together, we want to take a few moments and share the peace of Christ. Because we are still in the midst of a pandemic, we are sharing the peace of Christ in a socially distanced way, and this is what it looks like. First of all, when we stand, we're going to give ourselves a great big hug, reminding ourselves we are loved by God, and that we have the peace of Christ within us, and then we're going to turn and share that with one another. And so it is, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Would you please stand as you are able and let us share the Christ, peace of Christ.
our opening hymn this morning is The Gift of Love. I would invite you to stand as you are able as we sing, and also if you have your mask to please put it on. We recognize that singing still projects um, further than anything else, and this is one way that we can continue to take care of each other. The other secret about it is, if you're singing loudly and it's not on key, no one knows where it's coming from. <laughs> so please stand as you are able and let us sing. Today we welcome Pastor Christie. Through prayerful discernment of her gifts and graces, Bishop Paul Leland and the cabinet have sent her to serve, lead, and love among us as our lead pastor. Pastor Christie, you have been called by God and sent by the church, and we welcome you. Here is this Bible. <clears throat> Be among us as the one who proclaims the word. With this water, baptize new disciples and help us remember our baptismal vows. Call us to gather around the table of grace as we remember and give thanks for Christ's body and blood. As a United Methodist Church, help us order the ministries of Woodmont UMC in such a way but reminded we are a connectional church. Just as Jesus exemplified what it means to be a servant, lead us as a servant to be servants for all. As we continue to be one church on two campuses, lead us in our mission of love to this community and to all the world. Help us to see and be in ministry with the least last and lost as we provide food to those who are hungry and offer hope to those seeking healthy paths. Help us to vision the future mission of God's people. I have been called and sent. With God's grace and help, I will love, lead, and with you make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Friends in Christ, let us celebrate this new beginning and all that is to come. It is important to support and uphold Pastor Christie through your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness as we celebrate this new beginning. Let us pray. God, we ask you to strengthen and sustain us in our ministries together with Pastor Christie. Give her and us patience, courage, and wisdom. Let us have grace for one another, so to care for one another. 
help us come together to follow Jesus Christ, living together in love and offering gifts and talents to your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, bless the ministries of your church. Bring us together in our gifts in service to be doers of your word and not hearers only. May we live out your love for all the world to see. May we make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen. Amen. Your love for God has been made evident this week through your tangible gifts of hospitality and welcome to Reverend Christy Taylor and her family. May we continue this attitude of gratitude for all of God's blessings as we cultivate a life of faithful stewardship. As we begin a brand new week, where is God inviting you to be prayerfully present with God and with others this week? How is God asking you to use your financial resources to support the ministries of Woodmont United Methodist Church? Where will you offer yourself in God's service this week? How will you extend extravagant generosity to another in the days that lie ahead? May all of the gifts tithes, offerings, and worship that we bring this day bring honor and glory to God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture today, my very first Sunday with you, is 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God said, his only son to the world so that we might live through him in this is love not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins beloved since God loved us so much we also ought to love one another no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us the spirit of, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has perfected among us in this way, that we may be, have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because we were first loved, or he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, 
cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. God is love. A three-word sentence that sums it all up. Three words. God is love. It sums up our relationship with God. It sums up our entire It sums up the higher scripture. It teaches us who God is and God's very nature. It shows us how God acts towards us. It's so simple. It all boils down to God is love. So simple to say, so simple to read, but so hard to accept the reality of it. It's almost like we fight against it. We are human, and we rebel against it like teenagers at times. The good news is that Scripture tells us this is not the end of the story, but only the beginning. God is love. It's an active beginning. Yes, we did everything in our power to rebel against God's love. Yes, we were unlovable and miserable. Yes, I did just call us unlovable and miserable. But I'll put myself in that with you all, because I am human as well. But all the while, God didn't change who God is. God is love. God saw us as precious in God's eyes. God called us his own. God treasures us. And God went so far that God reconciled and fixed the relationship even when we were rebelling against it, even when we were unlovable, even when we were miserable. Through Christ sent his son so that we could have love, so that we could have life. God loved us so much that he would send Christ to die for us. God is love. God acted toward us when we rebelled, when we were unlovable. God knew we could not love, that we were incapable of it, but that we needed to be shown that love. And God is still showing us that love. God done. The scripture to say God was love, but that God is love. It's about what God does toward us. So with that being said, we need to think that yes, God acted towards us, but that's not where it ends. That relationship needs to be cultivated. The relationship takes cultivating in our everyday life and all day long. We need to connect to God. We need to connect into that relationship, our source of love, our source of energy, our very source of life, Life life-giving love. And it's not a single-sided relationship. Yes, God acted towards But that's not where it's supposed to end. And it's not a Sunday-only relationship. And this cultivating means we have a choice to make. If we turn into that love shown and into that relationship, we have the choice about how deep the relationship is and if we want to grow that relationship. 
We know as humans, we struggle with relationships, don't we? Anybody in this room have some messed up relationships in their life? This pastor right here, I promise you, I could tell you some lovely stories of some relationships in my life. Relationships take work. Any healthy marriage, friendship, even working relationship took work. It took some cultivating. Because relationships don't just happen. Oh, if only they did. Marriage wouldn't be so hard. Those of us who have been married any length of time. In this, we recognize that it will take us making that choice to turn into that relationship with God, desire to grow in that relationship, to grow ourselves. It takes work to grow in discipleship. Where we learn not only to be takers and receivers of the love, but how we grow to the point that we'll give that love away, which we will look at in the future weeks. So I don't want to get too far down that path. So each day we get to make choices from the love that we have received from God. And the example of love set before us that God would send his son to die for us. We get to make choices about that love and what happens with that love. And it is from God showing love to us then we get to choose to live out of that relationship. We choose to live from the relationship and how our lives will be lived differently because they are called to be different. We want to change. We want to have our hearts transformed. It is when our hearts and lives are open that the transformation that Christ begins in us continue. We become all new creations, as Scripture tells us. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. So God showed us love and gave us the example of love through Christ. So let's think about what Scripture tells us, what that love looks like. The example, the exact example set for us. It looks like Jesus eating with sinners. It looks like Jesus touching lepers. It looks like Jesus feeding the multitudes. It looks like Jesus saying, go and make disciples until the ends of the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It looks like Jesus holding a stone saying, let anyone among you who is without sin cast the first stone at her. It looks like Jesus washing feet. It looks like Jesus breaking bread and sharing the cup. It looks like Jesus eating with Judas, knowing what Judas had done and what would happen later that night. It looks like Jesus saying to the Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It looks like Jesus saying, you will be with me in paradise. It looks like a death of criminals on a cross. And it looks like an empty tomb. This love frees us from those things that bind us and hold us and depress us. This love frees us so that we can live the life that is given through Jesus Christ and live in joyful obedience and be able to have Life that is life. This love frees us so that we don't have to live in fear, fear of punishment, as today's scripture says. That we get to live in and out of love. It is like a weight being lifted from your shoulders this very day. It is when God's love can freely flow in and through you and an open vessel. This is when 
we will know God in a deep and intimate relationship. It is when we are open to God and know God in the depths of our soul. It is that you have the assurance that you can confidently know that you are in his hands. You are a child of God and named by God and you are precious. It is when you know the scripture to be true how you are adopted and that Jesus died for you. It is when you live in the abiding relationship that is written by in the scripture where it said God lives within you. To abide means to be at one with. And it is when you feel how you are at one with God as your Father. And the holiest of relationships. And you are connected in that relationship. This becomes the foundation of who we are. And it becomes our identity. This becomes the foundation of how we function in life and how we live out in life. It becomes what people see and experience of us. People don't have to wonder if you're a Christian or a Sunday-only Christian because they see it and know it through you. They know that love. They know that God is love is part of you. It is when you know this love as God breathing into you and the relationship gives life. And you are full of life. It is how you have that joy, joy, joy down in your hearts that we all learned about when we were so very small. This love brings life. And as those who come alive in love, we let this love move us and flow through us. So it's like rushing waters. And it's, we are so full of this love that it has nowhere to go but overflow through us, out to the world, and to others. And next week, we're going to look at tangible ways of that love flowing in us and through us and just overflowing. So today, we remember how God proved God's love to us, even when God didn't have to, even when, like I said, we were unlovable and miserable. The gift of love in Christ. God proved how God's loved us, and changed the whole world forever. God's love changes the world, and is changing history, and even history right now. So when you think that love doesn't matter, I want you to remember how much you were loved, and what it did in your life. And when you think that love can't change things, well, Scripture tells us differently that it changed the whole world for all time, forever. Because that's why we're here, is to remember that love and then to share it. Because Jesus' love changed everything. That's who we are as beloved children of God. That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to die to show love so that all may experience that love. The whole world. And the challenge of that is we work to do. But we're going to be doing it together because the whole world has yet to know his love. The mighty power, time-changing 
history-changing love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us continue in an attitude of worship as we pray. Thank you, God, for your word read and your word proclaimed. For being God, who is love, forgiveness, peace, and grace. To the world and to each and every one of us. Forgive us, O God, for the ways we have not borne your image of love in this world. For the ways that we have been unlovable to ourselves and to and with one another. Forgive us for the ways we have chosen to be judgmental, impatient, and unkind. Holy and loving God, hear our confessions today. We come laying our heart and our lives before you. And we pray once again that your love and your forgiveness would turn us around so that we might walk faithfully on the road that leads to life eternal. Open us once again to your love. Even as we look at the altar table before us, and we see the signs of your tangible grace. Help us to be grace bearers. Through your word proclaimed and lived in our lives, through the way we order ourselves as a church, by our acts of love and hospitality, as we extend love to one another, especially to the least, the last, and the lost. Thank you for your love that welcomes us home whenever we stray, that beckons us over and over to look into your eyes and to know of your love. And for the waters of baptism, that remind us that we are claimed as yours forever. Hear our prayers, O God. We pray especially this day for those who are hurting in body, mind, or spirit. And we give you thanks for your healing presence and touch in those very same places of woundedness and pain. We pray that your loving arms would be linked together with those so full of hope they hardly know what to do, and those who are so hopeless they believe there is nowhere else to turn. Hear our prayers, O God, for those who are worried, for themselves, for those they love, for the community, for the world. Remind us that your gift of love is showered upon each and every one. Thank you, God, for the gift of today and the love that you have poured out that we might have this moment. And for the love that is binding us together in person and online 
as we lay claim to the goodness of God. Thank you for Christy and for the gifts that she brings, for her humble spirit, and for the message of love that seeks to create a pathway that all might know love through her and through your great church. Bind our prayers together, spoken and unspoken, as together we now pray your prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. That love that Christy was just speaking about, God's love, it's kind of a reckless love in that it knows no bounds and it's poured out over and over for us. So as we prepare to go into this world, I invite you to stand as you are able, put your mask back on because we sang much louder with our mask on, and let us together join in the words of the song, Reckless Love. Let us stand and sing.
no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Precious children of God, you are beloved. Let that sink in this day so that you may know how precious you are so that we can share that with others in need of knowing the love of God for themselves. Be freed. In this love, because you are loved. Amen. <laughs>